that too expensive? Um, so we did two things. Basically, as an institution, we would invest enough so that the overhead is percentage-wise low. Two, uh, there is something called a series seed. So now there's standard terms for uh, prefer stock. You could get it for pretty cheaply. Um, you could get law firms to do it for $10,000. So things are changing. So our advice to entrepreneurs is try to bootstrap to this point, minimal viable product, and you know, raise half a million to a million dollars through prefer financing. You know? So you have enough of a scale. But if you must, if you need to raise 250K, do a convertible note, that's fine. And it'll cost you two to three thousand dollars. But as an institution, we just we prefer to we prefer to be in a company where everything's spelled out very clearly and don't have any sort of moving parts. With safe, lots of moving parts, and with con convertible note, some moving parts. But if you need to raise 250K, makes sense to go convertible note. Does it just make sense, mm -hmm. right? Hopefully I didn't repeat too many things that the, like the professor said, right? Good. <coughs> okay, so let's skip this. Yep. What do you think is the minimum amount to have a preferred stock? Minimum uh, round of financing? For, yeah. for, uh, different people give you different answers. For me, it's a million dollars. Yep. Can you also go back and forth like uh, from loan to stock and back up to loan? Can you explain that again? Oh yeah, okay. So the question is, can investors go, can a company, not investor, can a company start with convertible note and then prefer financing and then go back to convertible note again? Right? Uh, no, I mean, like the investors would need to actually uh, convert their loan to shares, right? Yeah. yeah so uh, if it's not scaling well, I mean, they can, can they convert? No, 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 no. Once you convert it, uh, typically, once you convert it, it's done. It's a one-way street. Yeah, good, good question though. Um, so, the, so the question is, you have a convertible note. <laughs> you decide I'm gonna convert to stock, right? And the company doesn't do well, can you then convert back and say I want my loan back? Typically, you can't. Uh, I'm sure if you go to Wall Street, someone could design you a financial instrument that could go back and forth. <laughs> but f for this purpose in Silicon Valley, the simple startup financing, it's a one-way street. You're a, you're a convertible debt holder, and if you see things are going well, you could convert it, and then once you convert it, become a shareholder. Yeah, good, good question. Andy? Yeah, please. Beyond the, like, a one million dollars, people don't do convertible notes, right? Like, no, the sometimes they still do. I mean, you see convertible notes of um, even larger, um, and for different rationales. Let's say you're a Series B company, you already raised 100 million, and then you might need $5 million to go to the next round. Um, but you may, you don't want to do a equ full equity financing because 5 million for the, to them is small. So you would just have uh, people invest in, in the convertible note uh, that will convert to the next round of financing, right? Because you're not, you don't have um, time to raise 100 million. Your next raise is 100 million but you only need five million to get to that stage, you take in a little bit of money. You, you kind of delay the proper equity financing. Does that make sense? So think of convertible note as just a delay of a proper financing, right? You could use that at the early stage, you could use that at the late stage. Yeah. Right. So the next investor might be tolerating a new stage of R for the, the company, and yeah. this is the first exit. Yeah, so that's exactly the reason. Um, so let me repeat that for the class. So one of the key features of a convertible note is it's a delay of setting valuation. So let me repeat that. Right. So you do a convertible note, so you don't have to set a valuation right now for whatever reason. Right. So for instance, 
Uh, one reason could be you're an inside investor, you're an existing investor. You may have a conflict of interest in setting valuation, right? You just want, you just don't, you want someone else to set the valuation. Because you're an insider, you may be uh, uh, overly optimistic about the company, right? Um, or you're a uh, friends and family or angels, you don't want to set the valuation because you don't know how to set valuation. You basically said, I'm going to do a convertible note until someone else, a knowledgeable third party, to come in and set valuation. And I'll simply convert at that valuation, maybe at a discount, because I came in a little bit earlier. Okay, so l let me try to rephrase your question. I think basically what you're saying is there's a disadvantage of being a convertible note holder because you invest and then the company makes progress, the valuation goes up. Why would you want to convert at that high valuation, right? Yeah, so, so let me explain. Um, there's something in the convertible note, there are, there are a couple features, two key features to remember and this will probably apply to all of you very soon if you raise a convertible note, right? Let's say if you raise $200,000 from friends and family, and instead of giving them a loan, you say, well, let's do a convertible note. That converts at the next um, investor or next uh, equity financing. You need to look at two things. One is the discount, and the other one is the maximum conversion rate, valuation. A discount is simple, right? So. I invest now in a convertible note, and someone else comes in and they invest at $10 million, right, valuation. Um, I would have a, say, a discount, say 20%, and I would invest in a valuation of $8 million. Why? Because I came in a little bit earlier, right? That's one feature. Feature number two, I may have a cap, right? I may have a cap at $2 million because I came in really early. My $100,000 at $2 million, you know, um, reflects the state of the company, right? So someone else may come in at 10 million, but I'm gonna raise my hand and say, excuse me, you come in at 10 million valuation, but I invested eight months ago, and I have a cap, or a maximum valuation conversion of 2 million. So I actually would own more shares. I, I come in at a cheaper valuation. Does that make sense? Yeah, so he said, do they then just deal with the right way, i.e., do the lawyers do all the arithmetic to figure out the right shares? Yes. Sim simple arithmetic they can handle. Yeah, good? All right, uh, let's talk about something even more important.